Hi everyone, uh, this is Phil Travis, and uh, it's week 10 here at uh, EOU for History 201. Uh, it's week 10, so um, I'm sure everybody's very excited uh, to have the summer in front of them, or perhaps you're doing a, a summer term. Uh, I've really enjoyed having each of you in my class uh, this spring, and um, you know, hopefully I'd love to see uh, some of you in a future class of mine in the... Um, in the fall, I'm offering a couple classes here at EOU, um, uh, History 437 of Modern Germany, as well as uh, History 112, World History Part 2. Um, in the winter, I'll be offering uh, History 448 of Modern Russia, and also History 111, uh, another World History course, Part 1. And then in the spring, I'll be offering some U.S. history courses, including History 480, um, which is U.S. 20th century, 1900 to 1945, it's an upper division course. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, hopefully I'll see some of you in those classes, hopefully in the fall. If not then, maybe the winter or the spring uh, next year. I really enjoyed having everyone in the class. I think we've had some great uh, activity in the discussion forum. And so I look forward. I hope everybody had a really positive experience in this class and we've all learned something. And um, hopefully, you know, I'll see you back in a future class because uh, I'd love to have um, each of you um, in another class. Um, this is week 10, so this is what we have going on this week. First of all, our reading for this week. Uh, we are going to be reading from our phoner book, chapter 13 and 14. We also have a couple of primary source documents I'd like you to look at. Of course, we have my weekly lecture as well. I put two weekly lectures up. Uh, one lecture is on the very beginning of... Uh, um, the events at the very beginning of the outset, if you will, of the American Civil War. And then I have a, a, a presentation that I've put up for you, um, a lecture on Civil War realities. So what were the realities of the Civil War for uh, the Americans who, who, who lived it and experienced it? Um, so discussions of more broad topics like military technology and, and, the, and, and approaches to the war by the Union uh, and the Confederacy. So... Um, Take a look at those. I think they'll really uh, they'll really uh, help to you know kind of complement the readings um, from our phoner book, which is chapter thirteen and fourteen. If you haven't done a paper, make sure you do this last paper. Paper three is due on Sunday, so make sure that uh, you complete that paper. Um, Remember, see the I, I've got guides uh, and information up on the papers um, in Canvas, in our modules area that have been up there throughout the term. So hopefully everybody's pretty clear on what I want on the paper. Um, I want you to use the document reader particularly. You don't have to exclusively use it. You can use our textbook as well. Uh, you can also use an outside, as long as it's a legitimate academic source, you can use an outside source. But I want you to primarily use our document reader. And I want you to you know, choose a historical topic from this test section that interests you, and then make a historical argument. Uh, propose a historical argument um, in the introduction, and then particularly use the primary sources from our document reader to defend that argument. Um, papers in the class have been really, really good so far, so I've been really happy with them. And so if you're one of the few people who hasn't done a paper yet, just make sure you submit that. If you have any questions about that, make sure you email me. Um, I want to see at least three different sources used from our document reader, um, and I want to see you form your own sort of historical argument. It doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. It doesn't have to be something that no one's ever said before. But I just want—I I, I don't want a general summary of events or something. I want you to make a specific argument um, about this subject and choose something you're interested in and that you can use the, the documents to support. Um, and remember, don't not do the paper, okay? It's better to do the paper and not do well on the paper than it is to not do the paper at all. The paper is worth 20% of your grade, and so, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you, you turn something in. If you didn't like the score that you got in a previous paper, you can do the third paper and submit that. And I, it's of no risk to your grade at all. I drop the lowest paper score. So if you do better on it, your grade will go up in the class. If you do worse on it, your grade will say the same. So that's another thing to think about. We have our last test this week. Test three, it's not cumulative or anything. It just deals with the material 
in this last test section, particularly the lead up to and then the fighting of the American Civil War. Um, I want to give you a few hints and uh, pointers on the test here before we go to the last factoid. Um, first of all, uh, there is a major point, short essay. Short essay, probably, you know, two paragraphs um, on this test. And what I want you to do on this test, it's not an opinion question, um, but what I want you to do on this on this essay, I'm sorry, it's a short essay, just like, you know, you don't have to do a massive, you know, um, you know, written response, but maybe two solid paragraphs. I want you to explain the, uh, the historical process that led to the American Civil War. And I want to make sure that you are drawing with specific details drawn from our class readings um, in our lectures. Um, so uh, you'd want to talk about things like the Missouri Compromise, um, the debate over the federal power to outlaw slavery in future territories, the Wilmot Proviso, uh, the Mexican-American War, the, the issue of expansion and how that factored into the argument over, you know, free state and slave state. Um, you might talk about, uh, you should talk about the Compromise of 1850, the Fugitive Slave Law, the attitude of Zachary Taylor, um, the debates over popular sovereignty that became very significant, um, particularly behind the voice of individuals like Stephen Douglas and the issue over, uh, over Kansas and Nebraska. You might, you might discuss uh, bleeding Kansas and um, events like the New England Immigrant Company that sent the so-called Sharps Rifles or, or Beecher's Bibles to Kansas. Uh, you might mention the election of Abraham Lincoln, as well as the uh, contentious, contentious Democratic conventions of 1860. Uh, there's a number of things. You can mention and discuss the rather weak presidencies of Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, and James Buchanan, who each tended to appease the issue and to appease um, you know, the, the, the issue of slavery and of secession. You might talk about the Dred Scott decision. There's numerous things that you could do with this. Discussing popular sovereignty, states' rights, the issue of slavery, Underground Railroad, the free soil issue, of course, which Abraham Lincoln was, uh, was, uh, was an advocate of. He was a part of the so-called free soil movement. And all of those types of things could be um, discussed as you discuss the historical development of the issues that led to the American Civil War. So make sure you, you know, do an outline. Please do not pre-write the essay. Um, you know, I don't want to see any copy to paste essays. But you ha should have your book out, have your notes out, um, and uh, it just be ready to write that kind of an essay. It's worth 40 points, so it's all about specific details. Do the best you can. And uh, if, you, if you do the best you can, I don't think you'll have anything to worry about. Uh, but remember, specific details. Let's see here. Anything else? Oh, I want to give you some free test pointers in addition to that. So how about some free test answers? Little bonuses for watching these announcements, especially because this announcement is clearly going to go a little long. It's the end of the term. You know, it's the last time we get to give you guys an announcement here So uh, for this term. Uh, here's one. So, Zachary Taylor would be best remembered as a southern slave owner who refused to compromise with the South. That's one particular question on the test that I can think of. Um, you have a question on the test that asks you to, it's a, like a five-point you know, short paragraph that asks you to describe Civil War realities and uh, why the Civil War was so uh, destructive. Um, and in that case, you might want to develop, discuss the widespread usage of muzzle-loading rifles, which, of course, with the combat style, meant that uh, those weapons were much more accurate than the smoothbore muskets that were used by most soldiers during the American Revolution. And the widespread use of those rifles in close quarters fighting uh, ultimately meant that the war was much, much more deadly uh, as a rifle fires much more accurately at a much greater velocity. They were also using very large caliber um, bullets, which tended to break bones, which cause infections, leads to horrifying amputations and gangrene, 
uh, and these types of things, which of course is what killed Stonewall Jackson after he was accidentally shot by his own troops at Chancellorsville. Um, so let's see here. Uh, you got a little short paragraph on Civil War realities. What's another good one I can, I can throw out for you? Uh, of course, Abraham Lincoln was a member of the Free Soil Movement. That's a good one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, I've got one. Uh, the Anaconda Plan. The Anaconda Plan, which is the plan to blockade the South, was proposed first by Winfield Scott. Uh, and so the Anaconda Plan, the overall sort of plan to uh, blockade the South um, until they ultimately were unable to support the war and gave in as a result of the blockade, was originally proposed by Winfield Scott. Oh, let's see here. Any other ones? Let's see here. Do I have any written down here? Maybe I have a couple written down here for you. Okay, last one. I wrote a couple down here because down there because I wanted to make sure I remember a few that were directly off the test. Uh, a good one to remember would be that uh, it was William Walker from Tennessee who uh, went to Nicaragua in the in the mid late 1850s with the attempt of overthrowing the government of Nicaragua, gaining recognition from the United States, maybe even statehood, and allow uh, Nicaragua to be brought into the Union as a slave state, and also per perhaps a corridor for a canal across Nicaragua. That was William Walker, who went to Nicaragua. Um, that was called filibustering. Okay, so there's some free, some free test stuff. Uh, so hopefully everybody's watching these, and that's a you know a nice little bonus for watching these announcements. Uh, here's the last factoid, and then I'll and I'll let you guys out of here because this is uh, it's going long. Sorry, last one of the term though. You know I don't get to do these for you until the fall. So uh, anyway, um, the factoid is this: to this day, the Battle of Antietam remains the bloodiest day in American history. It was the bloodiest day in American history. The battle saw over 22,000 casualties. The Battle of Antietam, the bloodiest day in American history. And it should be noted that, uh, you know, that kind of a number, this like almost incomprehensible casualty numbers, um, is symptomatic of the American Civil War. It's caused by the type of advanced artillery that was used the rifle technology that was widespread used by, by soldiers. And it also is symptomatic of the fact that the Civil War for the United States, relative to the American population, was very similar in the scale of death, um, as was the First World War for the major combatant powers in that war. Um, interestingly, uh, the Battle of Antietam was technically a Union victory, um, even though in any kind of like, you know, real sense, um, it was really a stalemate. But Lee's army left the battlefield, and so it was technically regarded as a victory for the Union. It was, of course, fought in uh, in Maryland. It's known in from the Confederate standpoint. It was known as the Battle of Sharpsburg, uh, but it was fought in Maryland. It was an attempt by uh, this, the Confederacy to win major victories near. Uh, the Union capital and perhaps uh, encourage Washington to sign a, uh, an agreement to recognize uh, the Confederacy. Um, interestingly, though, General George B. McClellan, who was the Union general uh, who was fighting uh, the armies led by Robert E. Lee, uh, McClellan lost his position um, uh, in command from Abraham Lincoln after Antietam because McClellan was very indecisive in, in uh, how he engaged Lee. He was consistently under the impression that Lee had more troops than he did. And so McClellan consistently like, failed to commit uh, his full army into the battle, or even a majority of his army into the battle. And then after Lee left the field, uh, McClellan refused to pursue Lee's army. And it was this kind of seemingly indecisiveness that led Abraham Lincoln to remove McClellan from this position. Um, anyway, long announcement. It's the last one of the term, and I hope everybody's had a great term in this class, and I hope to see some of you back in the 
a class of mine in the future. And uh, I look forward to having a great week. I'll see you in the discussion forum. And uh, if you have any questions about the test or if you're doing the last paper, remember you only had to do one of those papers. So if you haven't done one, no worries. Just make sure you do this last one. Uh, if you have any questions about that, you know, be sure to email me. All right, guys. Let's have, let's have a great week.